Good morning everybody and welcome to the Kimball Bay vlog. Today um, the title is called Blessed Are Those Who Hunger and Thirst for Righteousness. So let's see what the devotional has for us today. If we ever use the word righteousness, today it's usually prefixed by the word self. We're familiar with self-righteousness, and so we tend to have a negative view of the word righteousness. But while self-righteousness is ugly and ungodly, true righteousness is incredibly attractive. If we see it properly, it's something for which we hunger and thirst. The Bible gives us three angles on God's righteousness, scripturally. God's righteousness is his foundational goodness in Psalm 71, verse 2. His good life lived out in Isaiah 9, 7. And his justice in setting the world to rights, as in Psalm 96. These three aspects overlap considerably. But we see here a compelling flow from the goodness of God to his expression of that good life in Christ to his redeeming of the whole world in justice. Righteousness cascades down from above. No wonder Amos called God's righteousness a never failing stream. That's in Amos 5. Verse 24. But where do we fit in? We fit in right at the bottom as empty, thirsty, hungering beggars. In Matthew 5, Jesus does not speak of those who have righteousness or those who act righteously. He tells us of those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. The illustration is clear. We have a famine of righteousness. God has a feast. Righteousness relates to us the way bread relates to an empty stomach. Or water relates to a burning thirst. Think of how the Beatitudes have been building in Matthew 5. We are poor in spirit, in verse 3. We mourn over the losses and our sins, in verse 4. We feel ourselves too meek, not strong, in verse 5. Therefore, we feel our need for righteousness. And precisely because of our hunger and thirst, we are filled. This filling is not an earning, it's not a payment, and it's not a reward. The blessed person is needy through and through. This filling does not come because we have something to offer. It comes because we have nothing. Notice how this righteousness comes to us from outside ourselves. Jesus does not speak of a self-righteousness that we need to water or a spark of righteousness that needs a fanning into flame. No, we are simply famished. It's Christ who brings us the feast. Does that sound a bit abstract? Perhaps a bit impersonal, as though righteousness is simply a thing credited to us or food to be eaten. Well, Jesus is not teaching us about some spiritual stuff called righteousness. He's speaking of something very personal. How personal? Let's just read on a few sentences. In Matthew 5, Verses 10 to 11. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you 
when people insult you, persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Do you see the parallel? We are persecuted because of righteousness, insulted because of Christ. Righteousness is equivalent to Jesus himself. Most fundamentally, Jesus is righteousness. Amen. Righteousness might be likened to a thing, money, or food and drink. But that's only because in those illustrations, our own spiritual bankruptcy or hunger is being highlighted. Most fundamentally, righteousness is Jesus. He is the goodness of God. He is the blessed life in action. He is the setting to rights of the whole world. Righteousness is not fundamentally a state of affairs. He is a person. To enter into righteousness and for righteousness to enter into us is not about possessing a moral quality but about possessing and being possessed by the Lord, our righteousness. That's in Jeremiah 23, 6 and 33, 16. The Christian is simply the person who comes to the end of themselves. They say, there's no goodness, blessedness or justice in me. Instead, we crave Christ. And here's the promise to be laid hold of by all hungers and thirsters today. Do you hunger and thirst for true goodness, for the blessed life, for the world to be set to rights? Most fundamentally, do you want Jesus? Well then, famished one. Be filled. May you have a blessed day in Christ.